Good day and welcome to MWeb's Entrepreneur Zone, the series where we chat with some of South Africa's entrepreneurs. Today we've got with us Kinga Baranowska from Kalkachos Pizzerias. Welcome, Kinga. Thank you. Tell us a bit more about the Kalkachos Pizzeria story. Okay, well, it started almost 20 years ago. I always had the idea to open a restaurant. My best friend um, emigrated to Miami at the time. And I thought one day I would follow him. And I said, I'll come and open a restaurant in Miami. And then my partner, who's my husband now, approached me and said, well, how about opening a place in Cape Town? And I said, sure, why not? I was 20 years old, and that's where it started, as a single standalone store. I believe there's an interesting story behind the name. Can you tell us a bit about it? I had a very good friend, uh, Fabrizio Mani, and I went to him and I said, look, Michael and I want to open a pizzeria in Cape Town. I want a name that looks good, that sounds good, that's Italian. And he said, sure, how about Kulkakia? And I said, oh, fantastic, it looks good, it sounds good, well, why not, what does it mean? And he said, well, like, bugger off, and just, it's Italian slang. And we said, okay, well, why not, let's go with it. So that's where it came from. The restaurant business is a difficult business to be in traditionally, and many businesses come and go. You guys have grown over 20 years. What's the key to your longevity? Um, I think hard work believing in our product and setting out to be the best right from the beginning to making sure that we give the customers the wow dining experience and to deliver on product and service. There must have been some really tough times during those 20 years. What's been the secret to being able to maintain and to grow during that time? Yeah, well, I think at the moment times are tough and I think one has to communicate. I think communication with staff is very important and motivating staff and making sure that uh, we're all on the same page and we all have the same goal. You've developed a really strong brand. In fact, some of your clients have become franchise owners. How have you built up that brand equity? Um, I think by having a great product and believing in ourselves and making sure that we deliver a good product in a comfortable ambience with great service. You talk about having great product and your menus are something that your customers really like. They're innovative, they're fresh, they're often changing. How do you go about getting the inspiration for that? I have lots and lots of cookbooks. <laughs> cookbooks, magazines, look in the internet these days, get inspiration from there, see what's current, what's upcoming, and try and see how we can incorporate that onto a pizza, pasta, or a salad. And uh, how do you get the names for them? Because you've got some great names. <laughs> Um, we have Italian friends, we turn to the Italian school, or we make up some names. Um, like I said, I go back to this one pizza, the Spicotta, which is just new on our menu, which is launching now. Um, and we took spinach and ricotta and mixed it and made a Spicotta. And um, another one where we've put maybe wasabi peas or wasabi mayonnaise, we'll call it wasabi. And that's how we come up with the names. How, how do you roll them out across 22 stores? and maintain the quality and the consistency that you demand? Yeah, that's interesting you ask that because 20 years ago when we first started, um, it didn't have to be as technical as it is now. These days we have to make sure that we make really exact recipes with every single measure measured out and make sure that it has been tested out a few times and we give them the recipes, we get the franchisees to come over, have a look how we make the food we go into their stores and we check up on them and after that we send in the mystery diners to make sure that all the stores maintain the product. So I'm, I'm sure the question everyone wants to know is how do you become a mystery diner? Um, well, we use quite a few teachers from schools because I feel that they do good reports and they're quite, they've got attention to detail and they report well. Um, sometimes we have people that write in to our website and request to be a diner and then we have to take them across through everything and tell them what it is that we require. Being in the food industry, and I know for your company, the ingredients are really important and you put a huge emphasis on the quality. How do you manage your suppliers in that regard? Um, I think we manage them by making sure that we have good relations with them, with the suppliers. We don't chop and change. Uh, it takes a long time to find a supplier. Often we do get suppliers that come to us and want us to test the product out. And then because we still own our own restaurant, we will test it out in our stores. But inevitably they come to you with a good sample 
and then you try it out, you have it over a period of time in the store, and then it doesn't maintain the quality that you expect it to maintain. So we found that over the years it is good to stick to the suppliers, and if there's something new that we want them to try out for us, they're very happy to work with us, because as we get bigger, so do they. Another really important aspect for you is customer service, and this is delivered through your staff. How do you make sure that these custodians of your brand deliver an experience that your clients are looking for? We motivate them. We try and motivate them. Uh, we try and emphasize teamwork. Um, we have also, over the years, developed many notes that we try and share with the waiters, with the managers, to um, make sure that they're knowledgeable, to impart as much knowledge onto them as possible. Over the years, that has also changed. With menu developments, you sit the waiters down, you teach them everything, you explain to them what goes into the product, how important it is that they're delivering the right product. And they are also the final eyes of the food that goes to the tables. You've recently launched a new store top, the Mio Kakachas Pizzeria. What's the concept of that and how's it going? Um, it's going well. Um, Mio is a smaller version of our restaurants. We want it to be more of a takeaway delivery service and to become more of your neighborhood local. Uh, up until the beginning of this month, we only had one Mio store, and we have just recently opened the second Mio, which is at Monte Casino, and hopefully that will grow. It's still growing. A lot has changed over the past 20 years, and, and part of that has been the growth in the Internet. How has that impacted your business? Um, I think we use online media quite a bit. We've got quite a few Facebook and Twitter followers, and we communicate the new things that go on in our stores. We've designed a new website um, that is also quite interactive. Um, we did a pizza challenge where we put it out to our customers, and we got them to create a pizza online that you clicked through and you created a pizza with all the different toppings. And um, I think that also just puts it out to the customers. And they did it all digitally, which was quite interesting. 20 years young, where to from here? Um, well, our aim is to open 30 stores by the end of next year. And I'm not sure where that's going to take us from there on. But um, I think there's a lot of a lot of different avenues into which our business can take us. I mean, interestingly, the Mio stores, into which we can also launch maybe different products into it that are based on our brand. And now into our notorious rapid-fire questions. <laughs> What's the best advice you've ever received? To be a good leader, not to just be a boss. What's the best moment as an entrepreneur? Um, opening our 20th store, I was very proud. And your biggest mistake? <laughs> selling our house in Bantry Bay. What quality do you look for in people that you work with? Um, a good work ethic, passion, personality and teamwork. What makes for a successful entrepreneur? Um, somebody that is a good leader, that is able to um, motivate their staff and who has good values. What's the biggest inspiration for you as a small business owner? Um, I come from a family of hard workers. Um, my grandmother was um, a very successful businesswoman in Poland back in the day. She had an ice cream shop, and in those days, women weren't really entrepreneurs, and I think that's what inspired me to open up my own business. What, what things would you do differently? I would have wanted to have started franchising sooner. I think having a family makes it a little bit more difficult, and I wish maybe we started this a bit sooner. What keeps you awake at night? Uh, lately, the wind. <laughs> and what gets you going in the morning? Um, my husband, my kids, and I love my work. I love going to work every day. Thank you, Kinga, for joining us. And thank you for joining us in the Entrepreneur Zone. We look forward to presenting our next Entrepreneur next week. Woo!